Hello, Mr. Chopra. Please tell us what brings you to this SBMT conference. So my training is as a biologist and then as a physician. Uh, and I trained in internal medicine, endocrinology, neuroscience, neurochemistry. And in the earlier days, I saw the connection between what's happening in our mind and our consciousness and what's happening in our biology. Uh, through molecules of emotion. But right now I'm more interested in what is fundamental reality, what is the nature of the universe, how do we know what we know, and of course the brain is an important part of it. Current science holds that the brain is what produces experience, but I don't hold that view. I hold the view that the brain itself is an experience, like anything else, like this chair, like this body, like the Milky Way galaxy, they're all experiences. What is having the experience? Who is having the experience? We call that the observer or the seer or the uh, consciousness. But right now there's a big problem in science. We do not know how consciousness is produced, if it is produced by the brain. So I, feel that science needs a new paradigm, a new way of doing science. Our current science is based on physical realities, the real reality. What you see, this, this body, this building, Los Angeles, we say this is real. But then science tells us that all of this is made of molecules and atoms and force fields and gravity. Well, if it's made of molecules and force fields, atoms, particles, and gravity, then why does it look like this? That's called the hard problem of consciousness. Nobody knows. So if we change the way we do science to include consciousness as the fundamental reality, then we see that things like gravity, force fields, elementary particles, atoms, these are human names for experience. How do you know there's gravity? Well, we experience it. How do you know there's a force field? We experience it through, through mathematics and science, etc. But is that reality? No, that's not reality either because who or what is having the experience? So even force fields, gravity, atoms, molecules are actually human names for human experience. Once you understand human experience, then you say, where is human experience happening? Answer is, it's happening in consciousness. Where is consciousness? Answer is, you can't say where it is because it doesn't have a form. It has a form, you'd be able to see it. Like you see this chair, it has a form. That's where you can see it. Consciousness doesn't have a form, but without it, the experience of form is not possible. So form and formlessness go together. You cannot have form unless there's formlessness. Just like on switch can't, needs an off switch, okay? Everything on, off, on, off. Digital technology, on, off, right? You're seeing this movie, on, off, digital information. That's all it is. What is constructing this? Who is constructing it? We are, right? We are now, we have these technologies, we have Zoom, we have VR, we have artificial intelligence, augmented reality. What created that? Human consciousness created that. So human consciousness and what we call the universe are the same thing. Okay? The universe is a human construct. There's no such thing as the human universe. The physical body is a human construct. And it's constructed in formless being, formless consciousness which means that which is without form can morph into anything, including the human brain. So nothing is the basis of everything. Now, I'm saying in a very short, encapsulated way, what science is struggling with today. What is the universe made of? Answer is made of nothing. But that nothing is everything, including the brain. The brain, the universe, your body, your mind, are all made of nothing. Once we know how to manipulate nothing, we can create anything. In this hologram, how do we truly experience consciousness? 
We experience this consciousness by going beyond the mind. And the mind is always telling us magical lies. And our experience is also based, perceptual experience is based on magical lies. Right? My mind and my perception tells me the earth is flat. Nobody believes that anymore, right? Uh, my perception tells me that this ground is stationary. We know it's spinning at dizzying speeds, hurtling through space at thousands of miles an hour. My experience tells me your body is solid, but that's 1% of the acoustic spectrum and the visual spectrum. 1% is what I perceive as your body. But you, your body, this chair, your brain is proportionately as void as intergalactic space. If you could see it as it really is, you'd see huge emptiness with a few scattered dots and spots and random electrical discharges that we translate into pixels and which consciousness converts into body, mind and universe. It's a long discussion, but once we understand that, we'll have a new way of doing science and new technologies. Um, the, the implications are infinite, literally infinite. Please talk about the realm of the unconscious and our dreams and what that signifies. You tap the unconscious every night when you go to sleep and you tap the subconscious every time at night when you dream. So what we call this reality, conscious reality, is also a dream. It's a, it's a lucid dream in a perpetual now. All exists is now, right? Every thought is, that we have now is happening now. Everything we think about the future is now. Past, we think about it now. So now never ends, right? What this experience is, is a dream, a lucid dream in a perpetual vivid now. Why do I say that? Well, what happened to your childhood? You'll say it's gone, it's a dream. What happened to your teenage years? Dream. But what about yesterday? Dream. What about this morning? <laughs> dream. What about five minutes ago? That's a dream. What about these words? By the time you hear them, they don't exist. So everything you're experiencing is a dream, but it appears real. Who or what is dreaming is the more important question. So the great German philosopher um, Wittgenstein said, our life is a dream, we are asleep. Once in a while we wake up enough to know that we are dreaming. So the key to the unconscious is to know what happens in deep sleep. Your brain is very active in deep sleep. In fact, it may be more active in dream sleep. Um, it's removing physical toxins, amyloid, self-regulating itself, reducing inflammatory markers, uh, muscles get relaxed, the brain channels between the spaces between neurons expand. That's a lot of activity. What is doing that activity? Not the conscious mind, right? The unconscious mind. In dreams, what is happening is also the subconscious mind, but there's some activity. In deep sleep, there's no conscious experience whatsoever, but awareness is there. How do we know that? Well, if you're troubling thought in deep sleep, you wake up. Okay, so it means awareness was there. Even though you were not conscious, one little thought woke you up. Or you have a pain somewhere in your body, something is not being regulated properly. You know, there's inflammation, appendicitis, whatever. You wake up even though your conscious mind is asleep. So the unconscious is, is actually the master computer. It's where the codes are. And the subconscious is the software. And what we call the physical world is the printout. But it's not a constant printout, it's a changing printout. You know, everything is changing. So you can't call it real. Anything that you, you can't grasp, like these words, of course we'll have them on a tape or something, on a file. But actually they don't exist by the time you hear them. Please talk about discovering the self. The, that which we call the self is formless, has no location, in space or time and actually is 
what is projecting itself as space, time, matter, energy, information, that which we call the unconscious is formless, borderless, infinite, and is projecting itself as the experience of space, time, energy, information, and matter. Those are human names for experiences. But the experiences are conceived, constructed, governed, and come into existence in that which you call the unconscious. So yes, uh, spiritual traditions, God, Allah, Brahman, Ein Sof, non-local field of possibilities. It depends on your vocabulary. Of course, the vocabulary influences your perception, also your reality. And this is what humans have done. Humans have given names, constructs, language, and categories to experience, and we call it the universe. But when we understand how it's done, you realize that you are actually constructing the universe, therefore, you are God, except you're pretending to be a human being, which is a process. Please help us understand the source of your insight. I don't know, I can give you a definitive answer, but when I was about six or seven years old, I lost my grandfather very suddenly. I was living with my grandfather, <clears throat> and uh, my parents were in England. My father was training to be a cardiologist. And one day um, he was celebrating with his children and his grandchildren, taking them to movies. The next day he was dead. They brought his ashes back in a little jar. And one of my uncles said, what's a human being? Yesterday he was at a carnival and today he's a bunch of ashes. So at the age of seven years, I decided I'm going to figure out what happens to us after we die. And that never left me. I went to medical school, trained in biology, etc. And then, you know, I finally realized that we don't die because we are never born. All those are human constructs for modes of knowing and experience. There's no death, there's no birth, there's no universe, there's only you.